Growing up watching Harry Potter it made me really think of what life would be like as a non-muggle if we were wizards, if we could wave our wand around and manipulate things in the external world, what a life that would be. But through the study of philosophy and psychology and spirituality, it made me realise that in a sense we are our own wizards. So when you look back at things like alchemy, ancient alchemy, it's essentially like a medieval science where the goal was to try to transmute a base metal into gold. And I think that this idea of alchemy, of transmutation, transmuting something from one form to another, from a lower state to a higher state, also has its spiritual and mental implications as well. I believe that our thoughts and our emotions are also things, although intangible, which can be alchemized to a higher form, to a higher state. Our very being, us as individuals, are able to be alchemized to a higher state of being, our higher self. That is where the idea of the higher self comes from, because the higher self is our highest potential. Like transmutation and the idea of alchemy is just to transform something from a lower state to a higher state. Now I want to share with you guys one of the greatest forms of alchemy which I have ever seen. And it actually came to me when I read this book here, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And if you guys aren't familiar with his works, it's essentially an account of Viktor's experiences in the concentration camps in World War II. Now what's interesting about this book is that Viktor was actually a practicing psychiatrist before he entered the concentration camps. So he used his experiences in the camps as an opportunity to study the human condition, to study the human soul to study himself and other people and I think it's one of the greatest psychological works which has ever come <laughs> into the world and that's just my opinion but I want to read a passage which really stuck with me in this book and it essentially shows the true power of alchemy and Viktor Frankl says I remember a personal experience almost in tears from pain I had terrible sores on my feet from wearing torn shoes I limped a few kilometers with our long column of men from the camp to our work site. Very cold, bitter winds struck us. I kept thinking of the endless little problems of our miserable life. I forced my thoughts to turn to another subject. Suddenly, I saw myself standing on the platform of a well-lit, warm and pleasant lecture room. In front of me sat an attentive audience on comfortable, upholstered seats. I was giving a lecture on the psychology of the concentration camp. All that oppressed me at that moment became objective, seen, and described from the remote viewpoint of science. By this method, I succeeded somehow in rising above the situation, above the suffering of the moment, and I observed them as if they were already of the past. Both I and my troubles became the object of an interesting psychoscientific study undertaken by myself. Emotion, which is suffering, ceases to be suffering as soon as we form a clear and precise picture of it. Man, that is, and that is just so powerful. And the way that I see Viktor Frankl, in a way, practicing alchemy is for him to transcend above the situation and to see the good in it. And I do want to add a bit of context to this to really emphasize a point. Despite the fact that he was suffering physically every single day, he also didn't know whether his family was still alive. And that was just mental affliction on top of his physical affliction. But for him to rise above it and to see the truth that with every adversity comes the seed of an equal opportunity. To see that with every apparent bad, there is a good which can come from it. That is the highest form of alchemy. And it makes me think, if Viktor Frankl in a concentration camp is able to alchemize his situation in the present moment to see the good that is possible that can spring forth from this bad situation that he's in, then can we do the same thing in our everyday lives? Whenever we ourselves experience that we're suffering physically or mentally or even spiritually, can we, like Viktor Frankl, have the eyes to see a potential future where everything pans out and the bad that we are currently experiencing, good can be alchemized from it? Like that is the question which I ask myself, which I try to ask myself every single day now after reading this book, because that is the highest form of alchemy. And also what ended up coming from that. Viktor Frankl was able to emerge from it and come up with this book, which is over 16 million copies sold, I believe. And I've read and heard so many testimonials of people who have read this book and have said that the philosophy has changed their life. So it's actually caused a ripple effect of positivity of an ex crazy magnitude 16 million copies sold just from his ability to alchemize at the present moment so then it makes me think 
how much good in the world can we do ourselves if we every single time we choose to alchemize our own situation into something good can we potentially be like a force for good like Viktor Frankl and have our own ripple effect in the world of positivity isn't that is like a, like imagine that like a collective alchemy like a collective conscious alchemy of bad to good and I think that's what religions and spiritual teachers have been trying to teach us and I think it's just up to us the individual to try to apply it in our lives and I think that is the goal that is the goal for self-actualization of the people on the higher self path to transmute our fears and our doubts and insecurities into that which we can become that is essentially like the hero's journey sometimes when we find ourselves in a low state a low vibrational state or when we find ourselves at rock bottom when we seem to be engulfed in our own fears and our self-doubts our limiting beliefs and our insecurities and we can't see a way out then all this stuff that we're feeling is just energy this is just all energy that we're feeling and energy can be transmuted from one form to another and I'll give you guys an example so if you are feeling a bit anxious and you're feeling a bit stressed then perhaps this may be the energy that you need to go to the gym that was one of the first times I learned about alchemy because I used to be in a dark place in my mind when I was depressed and I was anxious and I was just drinking alcohol and I realized that I had all this negative energy pent up within me and then I thought to myself what if I just use all this rage and anger and sadness towards lifting weights that was a form of alchemy. I transmuted this emotion, which I thought was inherently negative, into a different form, which was positive. Because everything in the world is basically neutral. It is only our perception which labels it bad or good. I think William Shakespeare once said, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So, whenever we feel this energy within us, then this is a prime opportunity for us to practice our wizardry, our alchemy. We can feel the energy and we can transmute it towards what we want, what we intend. It sort of reminds you of in the last airbender how Uncle Hyrule was teaching Zuko how to redirect lightning. He said that he learned it from the waterbenders of seeing the waterbenders flow. Oh my god, am I trying to waterbend? No. Um, I'm looking funny, okay. So he's doing like, he's like, yeah, I learned how to flow from the waterbenders and stuff like that. And then to redirect lightning, is essentially redirecting energy so he gets like so if a lightning strike shoots him then he redirects the current and then points it out he's just a channel through which energy flows and it's the exact same thing with alchemy which is what i'm talking about alchemizing your emotions you can feel the emotion and then you can let it flow to wherever you want remember once you separate the energy you do not command it you are simply its humble guide now I want to give you guys some actionable tips on how you can alchemize and be more conscious in everyday life to be able to, like Viktor Frankl, transcend your current situation. If you're going through suffering and pain, how do we transcend that and to see the good in it? Because I know how difficult it can be when you're in the midst of your own suffering or in the midst of your own chaos, let's say, because it's so easy to get into the emotion and to be reactive and react based on how you feel. So for instance, if someone cuts you off in traffic or if a workmate pisses you off, it's so easy to just get into your emotions and not to see the good or the opportunity, the opportunity from the adversity. So the question is, how do we become like Viktor Frankl to be able to be conscious and to transcend? And one thing which I've really found is to really listen to your body. So let's do an exercise right now. I want you guys to take a deep breath in with me. And now. Okay, just one more time. Breathe in. And out. And I want you guys to loosen up the tension in your body. Like, are your shoulders feeling tense? Is your neck feeling tense? How does your jaw feel? How does your arms feel? How does your legs feel? I just want you to relax your body and to just be present with the moment. And to feel the moment. And I think doing this, doing this 
technique of self-regulation, of just calming ourselves down to feel the tension in our body, will allow us to, in a way, detach from the emotions that we're feeling because a lot of the time I'm feeling a lot of tension in my body and especially when you experience the situations in day-to-day -day life where it's stressful, when things get to your emotions, when things anger you or trigger you, then you tend to tense up. And then when you're tensed up, you're, you, you, this is your body, it's tensed up. And your body is a sign. Your body is showing you a sign when you're going unconscious. And that's why the practice of doing this, of breath work, of breathing in and out, and analyzing your body, analyzing the tensions in your body, will allow you to become more conscious and to realize. So the next time you're stressed and you realize, okay, my body is all tensed up. But then you are able to do our breath work to, to calm ourselves down, to relieve the stress, to you know drop our shoulders down, to relieve the tension in the body, to return to this state of calm and peace. And that is in a sense a form of alchemy as well. This is a form, like all of this stuff is essentially alchemy of just knowing and learning how to self-regulate ourselves. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys got a lot out of it. And let me know down in the comments below of your experiences with this. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer you guys. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Namaste and see you guys in the next video. Peace.